Hello team. This video will focus on the IRR formula, which is ubiquitous in finance. You'll never escape it, and yet I'm not sure that many people know exactly how the math works. This video intends to remedy that and gives me the opportunity to emphasize vocabulary, which I put in this fun little pop-up. So let's get started on IRR. A typical textbook definition follows. The internal rate of return is the rate at which the net present value of all future cash inflows and outflows for a project is zero. To someone new to finance, that definition means little. Worse still, the definition is accompanied by this intimidating formula. But what if instead of this formula, you were told that an IRR of 20% means that an investment grows by 20% each year instead? In other words, if an investment achieved an IRR of 20% over a three-year period, you could calculate the value of the investment at the end of three years as follows. And of course, multiplying something by itself three times is the same as raising it to the power of three. And if we were to then substitute R for 20%, since it is the internal rate of return, and T for the value three to represent the number of periods, you will notice that the math starts to resemble the slightly more intimidating formula introduced at the beginning of the video. So let's just ruin this illusion of complexity with some simple math. We now know that investment multiplied by the sum of 1 plus r raised to the power t for time period equals the value of that investment in t years. If we then substitute cash flow in time period 0, which is to say today, for investment in the equation above, and cash flow in time period t for investment in t years, then we get this formula, which is the same, just fewer words. Next, divide both sides by 1 plus r raised to the power t, and then subtract cash flow in time period 0 from both sides. And we arrive at this formula. And as a quick note for this last step, anything raised to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So this quotient is really just equal to the negative value of cash flow in time period zero. Which, looking back at the top, is the negative value of your investment. And this last line is the formula that this post starts with, with one cash outflow, the investment you make, and one cash inflow, the value of your investment in t years. That's it. That's the IRR formula. It really isn't that complicated. The notation you saw above simply means that you might have more cash flows in different time periods, which you would just include on the right side of the equation. As a last step, to make sure it sticks, let's incorporate some values for the variables. Imagine you invested $10 in period zero, which again is another way of saying today, and three years later received $17.28 in return. In the formula, you'll see the value of your investment, time period zero, summed with the quotient of $17.28 and 1 plus r to the third power because the investment is realized in year 3. All equal to 0 because we're calculating r for a net present value of 0. And again, anything raised to the power of 0 equals 1. And if you were to plug in 20% for the value r, you would find that this equation holds true. Going full circle, the IRR equals 20%. So as you work through the material on a simple model.com, if you really focus on the vocabulary, everything else will follow. Hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching.